Hello there, Joel from Jonesies. Uh, welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is part three of our diesel conversion uh, series in a Chevrolet Suburban Project Shrapnel. Uh, we left off part two with the chassis being cleaned as well as having the <clears throat> wiring harness all ready to go. So we are ready to start uh, making things look really good. Uh, for that, we're going to use a product called Chassis Saver. It uh, can be painted over uh, kind of light amounts of surface rust nothing scaly of course you'd want to get that uh, all scraped off but we highly recommend it it's a good product um, but we'll put a link for it uh, in the description if you want to pick some up for your project but anyway next thing is uh, we're going to apply the chassis saver uh, just with a basic brush we're just going to brush it on and um, it uh, dries to a nice satin finish and will provide some really good um, protection for our our surface rusted chassis so um, here you can see we get it all got it all painted on there and it looks really really good okay here's the moment of truth it is time to install the engine in the chassis for the final time we've already mocked everything up we've test fit everything and everything is ready to go so I do not recommend that you guys uh, try and stab the whole entire powertrain in in one shot like I have here unless you have a significant <clears throat> way to uh, lift it. I'm lucky enough to have a bridge crane here in the shop that'll pick pick up this weight and uh, do it safely. So uh, just be advised, this is a very long, very heavy uh, drivetrain. So anyway, the uh, chassis, a couple things that we uh, we did. I swapped over all of these heater lines from our non-diesel uh, donor rig. So we uh, picked up a, um, a Suburban that uh, had rear air and rear heat. And uh, so we swapped these over and uh, changed them over. So there, I get the questions a lot as to whether or not it's best to start out with a gas truck or with a diesel truck. And the answer is it uh, depends. There are some things that, that you need um, from the diesel, like the instrument cluster and the... Uh, sending unit in the tank and things like that that make things easier for the diesel if you start out that way. Um, also, licensing is also easier in places like California um, <clears throat> because you don't have any issues. But there are some things um, that are nice about the gas uh, to make this a little easier. And one of them, especially for the Suburbans, is all of these heater lines, how they have them routed versus the diesel ones. They came out and then had hoses that came up the back of the engine right in this area. So those won't work with the Cummins. Um, so find those on the gas. The other one is um, if you're gonna run an intercooler, our intercooler piping is gonna go right where the uh, this uh, windshield washer reservoir is under the secondary battery. So the gas ones that don't have a secondary battery, they put their windshield reservoir right here. So we're gonna swap that out so that we can make room in this area for our intercooler piping. So uh, again, kind of a, a, a balancing act trade-off um, <clears throat> whether or not it's best to uh, start with a gas or a diesel. Okay, so we've got everything else uh, ready to go. Like I said, I've installed all my air conditioning lines and all my heater stuff uh, while I have easy access to it. And then also got the transfer case uh, and transmission cross member painted up and ready to install. So um, as far as the engine mounts themselves, I found it easier if you leave the brackets off until you get the engine kind of set in here and then you just slip the brackets in, bolt them to the block. That way you don't have to raise it up quite as high to get it up over studs or anything like that in these uh, mounting pads. So let's go ahead and uh, get this thing set into place.
After a little bit of muscling around, we uh, got everything bolted in. You guys can take a look at the placement of the passenger side right hand engine mount. You can see the anti-tip uh, pads on the uh, Gen 1 Dodge Isolator point in the forward direction. And on the driver's side, you can see they're opposite. They point <clears throat> in the back or aft direction. So sometimes it can take a little bit of wrangling um, to get this thing positioned in here correctly. So what I generally do is I use that rear, that rear lift point um, as well as this lift point to get to get everything kind of in position and then I uh, transfer over to a jack underneath the transmission and then both of my pick points on the front so that I can move the engine side to side and get it far back. You can't really get it completely set in place with this one because of the overhang on the firewall. So I get it kind of stabbed in position with uh, using those two and then I switch it to the front. Right now the uh, transmission is sitting on the transmission cross member. I have not drilled the holes specifically in the frame rail for that. Um, but you can kind of see we've got lots of room for our exhaust to come down there. It is pretty tight on this heater line here, but that's why we put that heat shield. And we'll go ahead and hook up our power steering lines as well as start to get everything else uh, buttoned up and uh, finish up this install. Now that we've got our uh come and sit in place permanently. Let's talk a little bit about sensors. This is the coolant temp sensor from the uh, previous 6.5 liter engine. And I'm going to uh, install <coughs> it right here in this, uh, in this location. This is where the original vent tube was um, for the, the P-Pump 12 valve. And because we're gonna run our high mount kit um, and the smaller uh, thermostat, it does not require the, uh, the vent tube along with the vertical water outlet. So it's uh, pretty easy to adapt this stuff over. This, uh, just I just have a bushing right here. It's a uh, half inch MPT um, male threads to three eighths MPT female threads. And it'll just go right here in that spot. And for the oil pressure sending unit, same thing. This was for the General Motors application. And um, it's gonna adapt over to the Cummins with a 1 8 inch NPT male and a quarter inch NPT female adapter right here. So it's actually going to be located underneath the block pump. You can hopefully you can see the fitting hole right there. It's kind of shiny underneath that P pump right above our motor mount. So there's a oil passage. We're going to put it right there. You could install it over here on top of the oil filter housing, um, but I prefer to mount it on the driver's side of the engine block. So that takes care of the sensors. Uh, we also uh, went ahead and installed the 1995 receiver dryer and the 95 uh, AC line kit. So we've got all those ready to go. Um, one of the nice things about having that uh, donor Suburban is we were able to harvest all of the, in fact, the original uh, rear air conditioning and rear heater tees and lines. So I was able to steal those from the donor Suburban versus the factory uh, uh, 6.5 rear heat lines came back in here and that wasn't going to work. So... Uh, you can see we've got the wiring harness is uh, wrapped. I haven't fully secured it in position, but the bulkhead is there. And all of the conduit is on, as well as wired in your, um, your kill solenoid. Um, working on getting some throttle linkage, figuring out throttle linkage here. So we've got your original Cummins stuff, and uh, it's hooked up right now. And we will steal the manual pedal as well as the cable from the donor Suburban to bring in and put 
for your uh, throttle pedal. I uh, had to replace one of the main uh, power steering pressure lines. It looked like it was going to blow, so we got that put in. Um, last thing kind of up front here, this, uh, this area right here where the windshield washer reservoir is prime real estate for some intercooler piping. So that's going to go away, and we're going to mount the gasoline version of the washer reservoir, the factory one right here, which again, luckily we were able to harvest uh, from the donor suburban and I've got a, I ordered you a new cap. So we'll, we'll get a new cap for it and uh, be able to bolt that right in. It's actually turned out to be pretty useful to have that other, have that other suburban here. I was able to steal quite a few pieces off of it that could could have done without, but you know, makes for a much nicer setup. Also, you can uh, move it inside. Here you can see uh, we've I cut the hole for your manual transfer case linkage. So that will all go in there, as well as obviously cut the hole for your transmission shifter. And then as you can see, all of your sound deadeners. So we coated the whole front section of the Suburban on both sides uh, with with the sound in there. Over here inside the uh, glove box, that's all of the original um, wiring that will get plugged back into the ECM. I'm going to leave the ECM in position. There's no reason to take it out at this point. Um, that way it'll terminate all of those and then all of those connectors will still be there. So if you ever needed to do a pin out or wanted to wire something else in, there are some extra extra wires that you could use for that. So the haven't haven't figured out exactly what we're gonna do with the uh, four wheel drive buttons that won't be there. But uh, again, the donor suburban should have a nice uh, block off plate for that, so that we can <coughs> make that look as clean as possible. Um, had to make a custom three inch, really, really tight uh, downpipe. So a machine to, machine to special V-band flange to connect up to your turbo and then use the two uh, three inch mandrel bent elbows uh, and then upsize them to the four inch and then immediately uh, put in your exhaust uh, brake right here. So. You just have a very short piece of three inch that uh, immediately upsizes into your exhaust brake. And the rule is you want your exhaust brake to be as close to your uh, turbo as you can so that uh, heat can keep it clean. And then after that, we uh, installed the four inch diamond eye kit here. <clears throat> Bummer is, is that diamond eye stopped making the ones for these Suburbans. And so I actually bought a, uh, a four inch kit for a Dodge truck and then kind of had to piece it together. But I was able to successfully successfully get you a full mandrel bent four inch exhaust into a really nice stainless heavy duty straight through muffler and to build some custom hangers to, to make it work. But it comes in the back here and snakes over, snakes over the top of your rear differential was able to get really good clearance around your shock. It's kind of hard with uh, such big exhaust pipe. And then exit it in kind of the stock location right here behind the, the rear tire. So um, that turned out really nice. I'm really happy with, with that. Also got your drive lines back. So this was your stock drive line that we had new U-joints put in, obviously cleaned up and then rebalanced. Uh, moving over to your transfer case. Uh, the linkage is all installed for the mechanical linkage there. Had to extend that approximately two inches, but that was no big deal. And then also your clutch slave cylinder, we got that installed and adapted over. As you can see, we still got some, I still have some, a little bit of wiring to, to tidy up uh, for the transfer case. That's uh, what this is for your front axle actuator, but so far it's, uh, it's coming together. Before we go to the engine compartment, I wanted to show you the uh, 
all of the transfer case stuff came in and uh, we got that installed. We got your carpet put back in and we also were able to hang uh, your uh, clutch pedal and we got that system bled. And these um, two items are for the um, EGT as well as the boost. And so those will come up and obviously go on the pillar. Um, this is the switch for the exhaust brake. Um, kind of went back and forth as to where to put it, but I figured thumb actuation was, was going to be uh, probably your best bet. Everything inside here is really turning out uh, really nice and clean. I still have lots of lots of wiring to tidy up. That's all your old uh, ECM wiring that will need to get re-terminated. Um, and then obviously I need to figure out and wire in your your clutch safety switch. So that pretty much sums up the uh, what we got done on the interior. Let's go to kind of plan for the turbo intercooler. So the turbo is going to come out right here in this inner fender well, and then there's going to be a 90 degree uh, mandrel bent pipe that will make, and then it'll come over and it'll actually terminate and go through your inner fender well right there, and then out in this area here and then 90 right into your intercooler. And uh, that's that's the intercooler. I'm probably gonna paint it black, <clears throat> but that, uh, that's your intercooler. Modified your core support quite a bit, removed a bunch of material in here, as well as relocated the actual radiator supports back so that the radiator itself moves this way closer to the uh, core support and that gives you a lot more room for uh, your mechanical fan. Obviously we uh, kept the radiator that you had in it, the 6.5 radiator. It uh, fits really, really uh, nice in the, in the chassis here and uh, I think we'll be able to uh, make an intercooler piping uh, work out pretty well. So started to get your uh, belt system uh, organized and uh, sorted out. So we got some of that stuff temporarily installed. I also um, have the mock-ups for your radiator hoses. You can see the uh, lower radiator hose just has a small little uh, metal coupler, very similar to the, what we did for the upper. And obviously these hose clamps are all just temporary. Um, the nice thing about this is, is that it's all comprised of basic 90 degree bends uh, hose. So um, replacement will be easy. You should never have to replace these tubes and uh, you just have three hoses. So this short little 90 section right there and then the upper, the other upper and the lower are comprised of these 90s. So we'll definitely document uh, all these part numbers for you. Uh, heater hose built a couple custom brackets to support the uh, heater tube. So again, uh, just a simple uh, 5 8 90 goes into your existing, reused the uh, one of the cooler and heater tubes uh, from the old engine and built another little custom bracket right there. And then obviously it ties in and comes down into all of your rear heat, front heat, all that uh, spaghetti of, of heater hoses. Uh, wired in the uh, external voltage regulator relay kit. So that's working. And then also, like I said, uh, built all new custom battery cables. So this one will have to have some, obviously have to have some clamps in here, but that can't be totally terminated until we, uh, I build a shroud. So there's your clutch master cylinder and obviously uh, your cruise control unit. Uh, ended up building a little custom standoff bracket right here so that the existing um, Dodge throttle linkage would all work. And we got your cruise control cable installed there as well as the uh, throttle cable. So all that's hooked up. That uh, pretty much sums up uh, most of the mechanical stuff, but the uh, best part about this video is that we actually have started and broken in the Cummins. 
So let me turn the key on here and we'll fire this thing up. And you can hear it. Congratulations, your uh, diesel sounds very strong. I'm really, really happy with how uh, with how it sounds. It started right up, had no issues whatsoever. The pump sounds like it's perfect. Um, your turbo uh, is building quite a bit of boost. Um, you can feel it blowing out of that turbo outlet quite a bit. Um, smokes just a tiny little bit. Hopefully you can, you might be able to see a little bit of haze, but smokes a teeny tiny bit when it first starts up, but I think that'll uh, get a little bit better as we uh, get these rings broken in and get it broken in a little bit more so